Hey guys! Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, if you are new here, this is the Little Bean and Mean Podcast channel. I'm your host, Kayleen, and I am the principal fiber artist and yarn dyer behind Little Bean Crochet on Etsy and littlebeanlovesyarn.com. And as always, I flash the information here on the screen for you so you can find me on social media on all different platforms. So welcome back this week. It is a beautiful, sunny, and very, very warm Friday here on the North Shore of Boston. Um, and this should be a relatively short episode because I don't have a lot to talk about in terms of stitch work or dyeing. I have a bit of a shop update for you today, uh, which will be going live in exactly six minutes <laughs> as I'm recording this. Um, but, but yeah, and we have the 1,000 subscriber giveaway, which you guys have all been very patiently waiting for. And this past weekend we did hit 1,000 subscribers, which was awesome. Yay! So thank you all so much for your love, your support, just following along, watching, enjoying what you're, if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, that's wonderful. Um, if you'd like to be and you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. And if you want to get a pop notification every time that I upload a new episode, then you can just hit the little bell that's next to the subscribe button and it will give you an email or a pop-up on your phone every time I upload a video. So it won't, it won't go missing in your subscription box because there are tons, tons and tons and tons of wonderful wonderful, wonderful podcasts out there. Um, <clears throat> if you're ever looking for similar podcasts to my own, if you're on the main page of my channel, you can see a recommended channels uh, listing on the right side of the screen. Um, and those are similar podcasts to what I do here. So if you're liking what you see here, you might like what you see on other folks' channels. Um, I often do collaborations here with other um, YouTube creators, other yarn dyers, bag makers, stuff like that. So always keep an eye out <clears throat> for that. So I got my mic back up and working this week. So hopefully the audio is better than it was last week. I was having some te technical difficulties. Um, today's recording should go a lot smoother than it did last week. So anyway, let's just get into everything. Uh, I have the 1,000 subscriber giveaway to talk about, and we'll talk about it right at the beginning here because I know a lot of you guys are very interested in what's going to be happening. So I have right now opened a thread in the Ravelry group for the 1,000 subscriber giveaway. I'm going to keep it open for one week, so next Friday I will close it. And you just have to make sure you're subscribed here to my channel and that you're a member of the group. And I want you to answer me these questions three. What is your name? What is your quest? And what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? And if you know the movie that's from, bonus points for you. Um, but answer me those questions three in the Ravelry group and you'll be entered for the giveaway. I am going to draw for two prizes. So a couple of podcasts ago I did talk about um, the things that were going to be in there. There's going to be some stationery. I'm going to put some tea in there. You know, there's some stickers, a notebook, um, and then of course some yarn. So I'm going to <clears throat> take up all the responses from last week's call to action, which was to tell me what your favorite colorway was, and put uh, one colorway in each prize pack. So I'm going to draw two prizes for this giveaway. I'm very excited and I'm very thankful. And this is my way to say thank you to all of you guys who support like, comment, share, build, help build this community around positivity, beautiful yarn, just having fun stitching, and just enjoying life, generally. <laughs> you know? I mean, we all, we all have our, our days where things don't go great, but uh, generally a pretty positive community. So thank you all so very much. Uh, <clears throat> so let's just get into other things. So I do have uh, one thing that I've been working on is my shawl uh, that was made in Cecilia's yarn that we dyed for Easter. We used Easter egg dye to dye it, and so I'll grab that and show you now. Um, okay, so this is the yarn. Uh, I am now on my second ball of yarn. This is, was done in just a basic DK base that I haven't yet dyed on for the shop, but I've practiced dyed on for this. And this is the... Um, Ardent Shawl by Yanina Calio, or from Woolenberry Designs, as she's now called. And this is originally a fingering weight shawl pattern. Let's see if I can get it so it doesn't fall off the needles. It's a little difficult to show right now. And last time you saw me, I think I was somewhere here. I don't think I had started the second lace section, but you can see it's quite large. I have to kind of lean back here so you can see. But it's a basic garter stitch shawl with eyelet detailing 
and it's coming out quite nicely. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a second ball since this is going to be for my daughter, but I decided, well, you know what? The bigger, the better. If she's going to wear it, I'm very sorry for the big. Um, if she's going to wear it, then, you know, just go big or go home. So it's, it's a pretty simple pattern. I'm really liking it. So I have just finished the lace paneling and then the next garter stitch section. So I'm going into the third section of lace, which I think is the last section of lace. So there's one more lace section and one more garter panel section. Right now I have 124 or so stitches, 125, 24. I don't know, who knows, um, stitches on the needles. I am using my Carbons uh, Interchangeable Needles. These are US size 8 Carbons Interchangeables on a 40 inch cable to hold all of my stitches. So I'm enjoying this very much. This is a pick up and go kind of project. I know where I am. It's easy to keep track where I am so I can just leave it on the couch. This is my couch knitting. The uh, last couple days I haven't knit very much because, well, it's been 100 degrees. It was 100 degrees yesterday. If you follow me up on Instagram, you saw my post like, what the actual heck is going on? Having two very young kids going out in 100 degree weather is not very nice. So we went to the mall, a nice air conditioned mall, and ran around the playground at the mall. It wasn't that fun. So, um, so yeah, so this has been my couch knitting, and I'm very pleased with it. Right. So on to other things. I didn't do much spinning this week. I think I spun up one more color. I'm in the middle of a purple color uh, in the braid. I'm right now spinning up on some Log House Fibers, Log House Cottage, Log House Cottage. That's the name of her shop. Um, Shelly is the dyer behind Log House Cottage, and I'm doing a 50-50 wool, super fine wool silk blend, which is spinning up very nicely, but again, it's been very hot, which means sweaty hands, which means sticky fiber. I've just not been in the mood to spin right now, but you know, this week is a new week, so we'll see how that goes. And then other things, I've been forgetting to show you this acquisition. So a few weeks ago, I had purchased some skeins of yarn from um, Laura of Jinx Yarns. She's also the podcaster behind A Diary's Notebook. And she had done a shop update right when she came back from DFW Fiberfest, and she had a ton of self-striping yarn that was up for grabs. So I had to do it because I'm obsessed with her colorways. I think her yarn is beautiful. I love the way she dyes things. I love her aesthetic. So I had to just purchase all the yarn because... What do you do when you have a sock machine and you just need more yarn to make more socks? You just buy more yarn. So I'm going to show you the colorways right now. So this is Laura's information. It's a glossy card, so I apologize for any glare. But her info is there. I think she's jinx.etsy.com and she has a website, jinxyarns.com. And she does do variegated and tonals and uh, coordinating I, she doesn't do mini skeins, she does quarter skeins, so 25 grams uh, to go with her colorways, but she's mostly known for her self-striping yarns, which are just gorgeous. She has a beautiful sense of color, um, and so I'm definitely a fan of her yarn, so I just buy all the yarn. <laughs> okay, so I my friend Amber was over, and so I had already gifted her one of these. I had her pick whatever her favorite color was, and I don't remember all the colorways that I had, but I'm going to show you the ones that I do have. So this one is the colorway Lady, and it's on her Glitz Sock Base, which is four rows red, four rows yellow, four rows green, blue, light purple, medium purple. So it's a one, two, three, four, five, six striper. And here it is, this is the colorway Lady. It's very pretty. I think it's very pretty, very sparkly, quite lovely, quite squishy. Um, this one is Legendary Defender, and this is a one, two, four, five, six, seven. This is an eight striper. Um, there's no repeating colors in here, so it's black, red, blue, green, yellow, purple, orange, white. <laughs> it is quite the colorway. It's fantastic, very colorful and bright. Um, I'm very excited to see how this stitches up. This might end up being socks for Tyler. These will definitely be socks for me. This is on Dancing Mad. This is on her BFL nylon base. This one is also on her BFL nylon base. Now, the thing, like, I usually dye up on Merino base, but BFL is great. It's a great kind of partner with Merino because 
They're both pretty soft. BFL is a slightly more hardy feeling than Merino, but they're both next to skin soft. Um, if you're not super duper sensitive, you probably could use a BFL blend for a sweater or another garment, but they make it makes excellent sock yarn because it's extremely strong. So um, this is in her Dancing Mad colorway on her BFL base, and this is also many stripes. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is another eight stripe. She does a lot of long stripers. But this is a beautiful, beautiful colorway. So it has dark purple, gray, magenta, and yellow. Those are the colors that are in this skein. And this one is Misty. This is one of her Pokemon colorways, and this is on her 80-20 base. So this is 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. It's a very plump and round base, much like the sparkle base and much like the sparkle base that I carry they're very because it's a two ply it's very plump very squishy and this is one two three four five six seven seven one two three four five six colors and it goes orange yellow red blue tan and then um an ecru type stripe with red and blue speckles so this is misty this is one of her pokemon colorways very pretty and then the last one, which might be my favorite, is Dream World. Oh, I think the other one was Magical Girl. I think I got a Magical Girl, and that's the one that Amber picked was Magical Girl. Anyway, this is also on her BFL Nylon, and this is another that's right up my alley. These dark and beautiful colors. It's blowing out, sorry. Um, this has one, two, three, four, five, six stripes, and it's maroon. Uh, red, yellow, green, blue, purple, and it's all very dark colors, very dark and saturated, so quite lovely. I'm very excited to do socks. I have also her um, Bioshock colorway, I think it's called Rapture. Uh, that's also on the docket for some socks for Tyler, but I have to get to knitting on my machine. I just haven't had time to sit and just knit on it and have quiet and patience with the kids. I also want to do some more practice before I start officially making wearable socks in the machine only because I'm not entirely confident with my skills on it yet. You know, getting things to be seamed well it just makes me very nervous. I'm thinking about doing a test. Um, if you guys are familiar with the afterthought everything pattern where you are knitting, you know, a plain stockinette tube with some ribbing at the top and bottom and you're cutting in for your toes and cutting in for your heel. Thinking about doing that, I haven't quite decided yet, um, but that might be an easy and fun way, instead of working heels and toes in the machine, to work the heels and toes um, with the tube. So knitting up so many rows in a tube, cutting in, putting contrasting heels and toes in. I think that might be interesting, but who knows. Um, so those, that's my only real acquisitions aside from the fiber that I showed last week. I also picked up some extra crochet hooks uh, while I was at the mall with Tugger today. I had to get some cables for my setup here for the podcast before I filmed. So, ooh, I didn't set my, let's put up the update, let's put up the update together, together. Okay, here we go. I got a little carried away talking, and I forgot to put the update. Okay, it's live. It's live now, just so you know. Okay, so it's all live, all set to go. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's now 1.09, and I just put it up. Oh, and I got a question. Question. Okay, someone wants a custom colorway. I'll answer that later. Okay, sorry. <laughs> all right, so I'll answer that later. Why is this not focusing on me today? I have I feel like my camera's been having a little bit of trouble with autofocus. I don't know. Anyway. Okay, okay, okay. So shop update. Let's talk about shop update. I've just put it live. Um, I have several colors here and I have a couple new colorways uh, that I worked on this week. One was an intentionally new colorway that I had kind of been planning in my head for the past few weeks, and the other one was an over dye. So when I dyed my yarn last week or the week before, whenever I did those prongs kits a couple weeks ago, um, they came with a sage tonal and a sage uh, skein of sage 
a tonal yarn. And you know, the sage tends to break a bit yellow. And as long as the breakage wasn't too harsh, um, you know, or it was like all green and then just like boom, like a really deep um, mustardy yellow, then it was okay for me in the aesthetic and what I had been planning for the the kits uh, because of my initial dye the sage did slightly break so it was an intended thing but some of the skeins came out too broken so what happened was um, I was dyeing them in flat pans which is how I normally will dye my yarn because I'm able to just do several skeins at once it's easier for me to move the yarn around to get an even dye sometimes I do do my kettle dyeing in an actual pan like a a large 20 quart uh, pot like a stainless steel pot so for these I had been doing them in the low pans but with enough water for the yarn to move around for the heat to distribute evenly for the colors to take up into the yarn well so most of the yarn that I had dyed came out very well I didn't have any trouble until I came to the deeper colors the f um, there's a fly if you happen to see a fly buzzing by me at any point, there's a huge, one of those big huge flies that makes that zzz, like the audible buzzing, huge fly. Anyway, <laughs> tangent, tangent, tangent. Um, so anyway, when I got to the deeper colors, it was much harder for me without using salt or any other way to um, keep the dye from striking too fast. Uh, it was coming out too tonal so I had too much contrast in the skein and most often colors that blend well or are easier to dye when when it's too tonal it's easy to correct because you just put it back in with a little more dye have a slower lower heat up so then it strikes evenly all around uh, and then you can kind of correct that after the fact which I did have to do but then there are some colors that tend to break and we've talked about this before on this podcast where if you have a color blend, sometimes the colors, like they have different, the molecules are different sizes. And some colors like to strike really hard and fast and first, and some colors wait and they strike later. So if your pan is very hot and you put your yarn in, it, it, you can see this really easily. If you dye with food coloring, you can use Delphinium Blue by Wilton's or even... I think there's another purple color that you can use, but delphinium blue is a really good one because it breaks from blue to teal to purple, which is really interesting. So um, some of the bonds aren't as strong in the dye mixtures. So so when you put your yarn in initially, if the pan is really hot, the the molecules that are ready to strike first at a certain temperature will get taken up into the yarn and then the remainder of the color will stay in the pan and then take up more slowly. So that was the problem with the sage color. The sage, like the blue, like blue-green color would strike first. So it was this nice blue, maybe not as strong as the color here on my shirt, uh, but uh, maybe a few shades lighter this blue would strike first and then the yellow would strike second. And so in the low pans I was having all these issues with the bottoms of the skeins because they're just sitting there in the pan not able to really move around so much. Um, the bottoms were getting yellow, like just straight up yellow. They, it would over dye whatever blue was there and it would just be yellow. So uh, no matter how much I stirred it, no matter whatever. So I had to re-dye all the skeins that I had had trouble with a second time before I shipped everything out. It was this big thing. So the skeins, I put them aside. I said, you know what? I'm just going to over dye them. I'll make a colorway because I know I know the behavior of this sage dye, so I know how it will break, so I can replicate it. And I'll just keep track of other colors that I put on. So I have another. That's the second color. Long and the short of it, I got two colors: one intended, one accidental. So let's go in. I'll show you the colors that are coming in. So there is, of course, um, don't call me Nymphadora. I have two skeins available in everyday socks. So I dyed up all the everyday sock I had left over from doing my kits. This is Courage. Courage hasn't been up for a few weeks, but this is also an everyday sock. It's my Gryffindor inspired colorway. So I have Beaubaton in Everyday and in Sparkle. So this is in Everyday. There are three. Beaubaton in Sparkle. 
came out so nice. I love this color. Wormtail. I couldn't not dye Wormtail this week. I had to. I have a couple of skeins of this in every day. I was very done dyeing prongs, but I thought, well, you know, people may want just this color. So this is prongs. Okay, so Luna was one that I had tried dyeing before, and I ended up coming out with Nymphadora. So this was my second try at a Luna colorway. So this is delicately speckled with a blue violet, a warm yellow, and a cool tone pink. And I thought it really captured her delicate nature and whimsy. That's really what I was kind of going for. Uh, I wanted there to be pink and purple in there, but I didn't want it to turn out like Nymphadora did. Um, and I wanted the yellow to be in there because she has blonde hair. So I wanted it really to capture the delicate nature of Luna as well as her whimsy. That's really the basic thing. So then on Sparkle as well, I dyed up a bunch for the update. And then the last color I just have on the Sparkle base and on Luxock because those were the two bases that I had that split really hard with the sage color. So it's a sage base instead of an acre base. And it is speckled with gray and purple and a deeper sage. So this I called Mimbulus Mimbletonia. <laughs> This was, I called out for help with naming because I, I was going to name it Herbology, but I didn't want it to be too generic, so I called for some help. And then I also thought about naming it something about mer people, mer folk. Uh, but somebody said, this looks just like a Mimulus Mimbletonia plant. And someone else had also said it reminded them of an, of an artichoke. So I was like, okay, I have to do Mimbulus Mimbletonia. So if you don't know, it is the plant that Neville is holding. Um, it's a pretty rare plant. It's in the movie. It looks like a cactus, kind of, with like these circular, it's like circular bulbs all around it, and it has stink sap. In the books, um, Neville like accidentally cuts it. I forget how it happens, but he stunk up the whole train with the stink sap um, because of his plant. Then the last one is on Sparkle. Where are you? Here you are. So again, more Mimbulus Mimbletonia. Um, you can see here where the dye broke in the sage color. So right there, it was just much harsher than what I intended for prongs colorway, for the prongs kits. You see this one has more pretty speckles. So yeah, I thought the color palette really suited the plant, so I was excited to name it after that. So Mimbulus Mimbletoni is up there, and Sparkle and Lux. All right. That's all I really have for you today. I hope you guys are able to catch this shop update. Hopefully this can get up on Friday. Uh, this is when I'm filming it is Friday. I'm gonna be editing this now for the next few hours just to get the audio synced up right and have everything work out unlike I, last week, which was awful. Uh, the audio was just driving me crazy. So, um, so yeah, I hope you guys can catch the shop update with me and I hope you guys really enjoy the colorways. I hope you enjoy the two new colorways that are in the shop this week. Um, as always, if you have any requests for custom colorways or requests for new colorways to be part of the regular lineup, I'm always entertaining suggestions. Uh, I typically just dye whatever I feel like dyeing, but if you're like, oh, I really need to see Dobby this week, I'm looking for a Dobby, um, I'm happy to always dye up whatever colors you guys are looking for. So you're always welcome to leave me a message on Etsy. It's always the best place to contact me or through my website at littlebeanlovesyarn.com. There's a contact me form and you're always welcome to pop suggestions in there as well. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Just a reminder, there is the giveaway thread in the Ravelry group. So if you're into that and you wanna win some free yarn and free swag from me, from me as a thank you to you guys, 
for supporting the podcast and supporting me and my shop and my little family here. Um, please do go over to the Ravelry group and enter that. And the links are always in the description box. Uh, and if you'd like to be and you're not, you can always subscribe, hit the button below, give a like if you like it, hit the notification bell if you want a notification in your mailbox. And yeah, that's really about it. I hope to see you guys next week. Good luck in the giveaway. And I hope that you guys have a great weekend. And I will see you in my next podcast. Bye.